There's the open market outside Reed Food Cave. <laughs> okay, here's my de debut as a tour guide. Actually, I'm completely unfamiliar with, but generic, the generic explanation for the formation of stalactites and stalagmites is this. You've all heard of hard water. How many of you come from cities that have hard water? Okay, I come from Chicago, and the basement rock is made out of a similar material, similar to limestone, it's called dolomite. The thing is, this material dissolves in water. And when the water evaporates, the stuff, the mineral gets left behind. And that's what we call hard water. The same material is what makes up the stalactites and stalagmites in the cave that we see. Now, first you may ask, how do the caves form? The caves form because the limestone is dissolved by rainwater. Rainwater is slightly acid, okay? Completely distilled, pure distilled water is neutral. That's a pH of 7.0, okay? You probably heard of pH balance shampoos and stuff like that. All that means is the shampoo is slightly acid rather than a little alkaline. So when rain falls, some of the carbon dioxide in the air dissolves in the rainwater, making it slightly acid. And over geologic time, over thousands, maybe millions of years, this slowly dissolves the calcium carbonate, which is the mineral that makes up the limestone. The limestone itself is made up of billions of skeletons of sea creatures. Okay, you've seen clams, you've seen snails. They make their shells while they're living by pulling the elements out of the seawater. They make a shell. What happens when these creatures die? They fall to the bottom. Their shells accumulate, and sometimes the accumulations are hundreds of feet thick. And that's what makes up the limestone. So first you make up the limestone, then geological forces called uplift, you know, generically, will push these formations up out of the seawater so they're thrust up on land. Once they're above land, then processes which destroy rocks, called erosion and weathering, take over. And the climate here is moist and warm. Moist, warm weathering promotes what we call chemical weathering. That is, the mineral in the limestone tends to be unstable, it tends to dissolve. That's why we have caves. That's why the shapes of the hills are rounded. In a climate that's drier, the shapes of these hills will be more blocky and jagged. Okay, but we have warm, moist weather here, lots of rainfall. This is the type of topography that you would expect to see. How many of you have been to, say, Central Florida? You know where Disney World is? Okay, that is in a climate similar to right here in Guilin. Okay, we have limestone bedrock, moist, warm conditions, and we have a lot of development, and some of these developments are sitting right over caves, big caverns. The caverns get bigger and bigger as the water keep, continually percolates through the limestone. When that happens, anything heavy built on the surface will collapse because there's no underlying support. And that is what we call the sinkhole. Okay, so the stalactites are formed by what we call precipitation, okay? That is solid material forming out of the dissolved substances in the hard water. As it drips slowly, some solid material forms very thin layer, so layer by layer, kind of like watching an icicle freeze and get longer and longer, okay? So what these are, are icicles made out of minerals. It takes a long time, it's a very slow process. Some of the drops reach the floor and build their way up. Those are the stalactites. so these get taller and taller, whereas the ones dripping from the ceiling are stalactites and they get longer and longer. When stalactites and stalagmites happen to meet together, then they form what we call a column. Some of these stalactites and stalagmites have um, different colors. You may have seen uh, bands of brown or red or yellow. 
notice that they're not all pure white, okay? These stains are caused by iron oxide, rust. These substances are always dissolved in normal groundwater anywhere. Okay, that stuff gets picked up. Water dissolves almost everything it touches, so wherever the water runs, it's gonna pick up these other elements. And iron oxide is a very good coloring agent. You need very little of it to uh, discolor or color the, uh, the formations. <laughs> Elephant trunk here. Okay, it's a natural formation. Okay. No, just for the rubs, that one. Okay, no more steps for that one. Yeah, just they process it. They, they polish it. They polish it. Okay, with that too, let's see how it is. Oh, they sit, you know. No, they just, they, they, they tumble it. Brazen River. Each Brazen, it has a very pretty name, right? Well, we have two main rivers in Wheeling. One is Peach Brazen River going from the west to the east, and Lee River going from the north to the south. Those two rivers have a connection in the city at the Elephant Trunk Hill. It comes on the right. This is the Elephant Trunk Hill. Looks very much like an elephant stretching its trunk into a river. Try to get a drink. Oh, yeah. Uh, okay. So the tunnel, we can see through it. It's a natural tunnel. Okay, there's a pagoda on the top. So this one is for photographs, okay? Uh, I think the one that's cost four yen, something like that. If you want to just take photographs outside, you can just uh, stand outside, don't go into the park. If you want to see more things, you can pay the entrance fee and then to see more things okay it's up to you i'll give you 20 minutes here okay with that enough <laughs> okay just for photographs okay the elephant rock at the uh, junction of uh, the blossom river and the intervening river two rivers Thank you. 